hi guys welcome back to my channel um if you haven't noticed i did change this channel from tiffany and taylor to a touch of me rose really just because i knew that whatever content i uploaded was going to mostly have me in it and not taylor so don't think too much about the change it wasn't that big of a deal but i'm here today to give you guys uh, a life update um uh, I haven't been on here in like two months and I did get a do up. I'm sorry. I'm still like kind of <laughs> a little bit out of breath from recovery and stuff. But I did do a post before I left and I went on social media cleanse and I got baptized. My life changed after that and I will make a video going into depth about that experience. But coming on here today to tell you guys about um, my emergency surgery experience and i'm now in recovery and i'm recovering really well y'all i can uh i'm walking really well and um i wanted to make this video to be fully transparent i'm making it now because i do also like hope that it can supplement a little bit of my income <laughs> that i'm gonna be missing from not working my part-time job and also more than moisture I've had to do some cancellations and some returns, um, some refunds for some stuff because I can't make get up and make product and stuff yet. So I'm hoping that this can supplement a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of that. But also, you guys know I love to talk, and all I'm doing is like sitting around. And um, I just uh, went to my went here to my apartment yesterday. I've been uh, recovering at my parents' house, but. It's five days post-op and I made it over here yesterday and we have an elevator so it's just been good for me to kind of like get around and walk and um, I wanted to be home and shower at home and sleep at home so I've been but I've been recovering really well it's just times in between you know where I will get like pain in my incisions and things like that but I want to give you guys the full story time of what happened <laughs> um, january 6th so i don't want to make this video too long you guys know i can talk for it. so i'm gonna try to just say the things i want to say but also like not make it too long um i haven't been able to wash my hair or anything so i threw on this hat even though i'd rather not have it on in this video but it's fine so january 6th saturday that morning i woke up and i actually went to brunch with my girls it was like a bridal party brunch because my best friend is getting married and she all she formally made us like these goodie bags and everything to um, ask us to be a part of the bridal party officially we already knew but um, it was really cute it was really fun I have a picture we looked gorgeous and we were having a great time after that we went to go see the venue and it was great it was good I felt great I felt good um and then after that i decided to stop by my parents house so that night was the texans game crucial game for them to make it to the playoffs and we were gonna watch me and taylor were gonna watch it at his parents house and i decided to stop by my parents house before just because uh there was time in between like three or four hours to kill and so i went to my mom my parents place and i was just chilling and everything was fine and my mom made me some food for dinner she made me steak and then i start getting this really uncomfortable feeling in my lower abdomen and i'm like really just I, I, i'm confused i'm like what is this you know i thought my pants were too tight because i was wearing really tight jeans so i unbuttoned my jeans and it's just like it's not it's not excruciating yet but it's, it's getting there i'm like ooh what is this so I think I have to go to the restroom so I go to the restroom still don't feel any relief you know it's it's coming on strong now I start like sweating bullets I'm sweating so so bad and I tell my mom I'm like I'm gonna go outside I'm, I'm like so hot and she could tell she knew something was wrong with me but I wasn't trying to freak her out so I was like you know I'm gonna go outside I'm getting really hot i go outside and immediately i'm i'm like it's it's crucial i'm in so much i'm on the ground i'm in a chair i'm I've, i'm hot but it's like 40 something degrees outside like i am going through it and 
I'm like, what is going on? Like, I've never felt, it was the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. And I go back inside and instead of sitting on the couch, because once again, I didn't want my mom to worry because around this time last year, um, you guys know I lost my grandma last year and we took her to the emergency room in December, late December, and she was, she passed January 2nd, January 6th. And I just don't know how much more my mom can take. So I'm like, I have to I, I want to pretend that I'm fine but also I don't really know exactly yet because at first I was like this just feel maybe this is really really bad cramps so I'm supposed to get my period and then but soon I'm, I'm realizing like okay this is something I've never felt before like this is this is I, I like I don't even know what this is and I go to the stairs and I'm like upside down on the st not upside down but I'm like on the stairs face first rocking and my mom she's like are you okay she's like Tiffany where are you are you okay and I, I i was like i can't fake it anymore so i go to the living room and i'm like mom i'm not okay like i'm hurting and she's like i'm sorry i made you a bad steak she thought I, she she thought she made me a bad steak because the steak was a little pink which i i was like it's fine i want to eat it like this and she was like are you sure i can put it back in the air fryer for a little longer because she air fried it and it was delicious but i was like no it's fine so her mind she's like i made you a bad steak so i'm like at a thousand right now like i i'm dizzy i don't know what's going on i'm hot i am in excruciating pain and my mom's like let me get you some bc so i take some bc and then shortly after i start vomiting i'm throwing up everything in me and after that because and then my mom's like oh I, I made you a bad steak you know and i'm thinking like maybe it's food poisoning i've never had food poisoning before i'm like maybe it's food poisoning from the brunch spot and but you know after you throw up you feel some type of relief because throwing up is a throwing up and in, in going number two is like ways for your body to get out uh you know toxins and stuff i already did that first one now i'm throwing up and when i tell you it, no relief i felt no relief that's when i knew after that i was like I, this is not normal this is not something that like this is not food poison this is nothing that, like, that, that none of that because i'm not feeling any relief and i'm like double i can't i can't stay still but like i can barely stand i'm like I, it hurts to lay down flat because my, my mom kept trying to tell me like lay down flat but when i would lay down flat it, i would be so excruciating i had to put my legs up i just couldn't even think i just remember thinking like i i, like, I want to be knocked out because i don't know how long i can take this like i don't know how long i can take this pain and my mom's like okay i have these my dad's coming out at this point he thinks it's he thought it was gas at first and you know the severity of the situation is getting like more and more and more and when i tell you i didn't even think of emergency room i didn't think of hospital i never grew up going to the emergency room going to the hospital i've never been um outside of my grandma's experience last year and that just did not i didn't think like go to the hospital like that was not a thought process in my mind and my mom she gave me she was like you know i have these other pills because i just threw up the medicine right so she's like i have these other pills and i'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes if you don't feel good after 30 minutes i'm taking you to the hospital and that's when i started thinking i was like hospital like, this is a green light for me i'm like maybe i do need to go to the hospital and it wasn't even five minutes later i was like let's go like i can't take it i can't wait 30 minutes like i need to go now so she gets dressed and at the time I'm still trying to hold my composure because I know my mom has already been through a lot with losing my grandma and it was very sudden and so I know something's wrong with me but I don't want to freak my mom out and so in the hospital that we're going to is the same hospital we took my grandma to in the same emergency room we took my grandma to so I'm like thinking like I'm already feel bad that I have to go but I don't want my mom to think that there's something so wrong with me so i'm trying not to like be all out and just like on the floor and like da, 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 but i'm i feel terrible like i said worst pain of my entire life and my mom gets dressed we go to the hospital my dad stays back and you know we go through the whole thing we go in the waiting room my mom up until this point she asked me she's like do you want me to tell taylor because he's at his house and he had texted me i didn't even see it but the game had already started it was like first quarter and she's like you want me to tell taylor and i'm thinking like this is a playoff texans game if you know anything about taylor he loves the texans he loves all houston sports teams he's born and raised here and i'm like i don't want to take that away from him so you know i was like no no no, don't tell him and then when we got to emergency room she was like i'm telling taylor and he said i'm on the way immediately 
so we're in the waiting room waiting for them to call me they call me i head to the back and y'all it took them six tries to find my vein they couldn't find my veins right i'm getting to the point where i'm shaking i'm in so much pain and they're thinking i'm shaking because i'm nervous to have a needle in me i'm like no i'm shaking because i'm in so much pain and she's like i can't get you any medicine until we get your blood drawn like until we get this needle in you so he a man comes in and sticks me and he's like you know he doesn't even want to do it again and then a woman comes in and she's like i've never had to stick someone more than twice in eight years we're gonna find this right she sticks me she's like yeah i can't find it she sticks me again they're in my arm like swirling this around it i've never had this experience before i've never had a problem with people finding my veins my brother has had that issue i've never had that issue so i've never felt this before i've only ever been stuck once and they find it and it's fine but i'm i'm in pain and they're sticking me and i'm like ah. I don't know what to do I'm like this is the worst experience of my life <laughs> like it was so bad and so she's she you know she got to a point where like she didn't want to do it anymore it was like the fifth try and she's like I don't want to do this like you're in a lot of pain um she's like I'm gonna get the eye I'm gonna get the ultrasound which I don't even know they could do this but they were gonna ultrasound my arm to find the vein but in the middle in the between time they had to roll me to the ultrasound place so they could ultrasound my stomach keep in mind i'm still in excruciating pain so the lady she's like let me know if you need any breaks or anything i took a break like four times because i can't stand still she's ultrasounding my stomach and then she has to go deeper in some parts and i'm just like i just cannot believe i still have no medicine it's like two hours into this excruciating pain and i'm just like i don't know how much i can like how longer i can stand this you know because there's no benefit like i can see if i was like in labor or something like at least i have i know i have a baby on the way i there's there's nothing i'm just in pain and i have no idea why and so they're done with the ultrasound then they roll me to the ct scan i get a ct scan then finally they take me to get the ultrasound on my arm she puts the thing she finds my my vein and she you know uh starts to give me some medicine and it still doesn't fully relieve me until they give me morphine and that comes a little later but it relieves me enough that i stop shaking and i'm like can actually open my eyes because in between here i'm i'm like this the whole time like i, I just you know i'm out of it obviously because when your body tries to fight something you know you, it gets so exhausted trying to do everything i throw up again and i'm just like <laughs> at my wits end i don't know how much more my body can take and um <clears throat> okay so taylor's now here he's in the room with me and the nurse you know comes in and she's like you know have you seen the doctor yet and i'm like no and she does not have a good look on her face she's like okay well you're gonna be admitted into the hospital but i can't tell you why until the doctor comes and so i'm like okay like this is it this is when they tell me like i'm gonna die in two weeks or something like i'm like what is it i'm the suspense right because i already know something's wrong i can tell in her face she looks very concerned so maybe about like 30 minutes later or something the doctor comes in and he's like okay i have three things to tell you so the first thing he tells me is that um he said that i need to get my phone for this because i don't remember all of the all of the medical terms but he said so for one your my my ply plate my ply plylate count is extremely concerning so if you're like me you don't know these terms a ply plylate, a plylate count measures the average ply plylate level in a person's blood and uh, ply plates are cells that help your blood clot so if you have a really low ply plylates that means you might experience excessive bleeding your blood is not like it has no it's not clotting at all so you might just bleed out and if you have a high play like count you're really pr prone to uh having blood clots so a normal play like count is 150,000 to 450,000 mine's was 800,000 so he's like that's a very concerning the second thing is my blood levels are extremely low very 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 low and he's like you know you said that you haven't you have irregular periods so he's like do you vomit blood and i'm like no and he's like do you poop blood and i'm like no 
and he's like okay well we don't know where your blood is going because like you don't have you should have way more blood in your body than you have and you're telling me you're not losing any blood so i'm just like concerned on where your blood is going and my mom's thinking like she's internally bleeding because they just have no idea where my blood is so i need a blood transfusion and then the third thing they tell me he tells me is there's two large masses on your ovaries he said one is very large and we don't know what it is like they, they don't know if it's a tumor if it's cancerous or anything like that but he said that we do not have women's care specialists here at this hospital for what you're going through we're going to need to transfer you to another hospital and so i'm like okay <laughs> great um and then he kind of he leaves after that my nurse comes back in she comes over and she asks me what the doctor says i tell her what he says she and i was like you know he says that there's large masses they don't know if it's tumors if it's cancerous and she goes it is cancer and i'm like oh keep in mind it's me and taylor in the room she goes it is cancerous it actually came up on the scan as cancerous um you can look it up she told me what it was called she said you can look it up you do your own research you know and look it up and it is cancerous that's when she starts telling me about hysectomy I, and i know what a hysectomy is my grandma had a hysectomy after she had five kids but she goes that's like normal routine because i'm 25 and if i have cancer in my ovaries the best thing to do is to take out all of my my reproductive system to allow the cancer to never come back and never have the possibility to spread so i'm like whoa you know and now that i look back on it and i talk to some people that's like really illegal for a nurse to do that was not her place she's not a doctor so she shouldn't tell me things like that but i think she thought she was helping me because what she was telling me she was like you need to research this on your own and make sure you're taken care of and all that stuff and at the end before i got transferred she came back in my room and she said i wanted to say bye and you know you were worth staying for because keep in mind on another side note i heard her having discourse with another doctor she the doctor came in and said how are you doing today and she said i'm this close to giving you my badge and walking out of here because the culture y'all have in this hospital is horrible and i'm like oh so when she came in and said bye she was like you were worth staying for she stayed for me to like until i got transferred and i'm just thinking like okay so for four or five hours me and taylor think that i i have cancer i'm gonna have a hysectomy along with having a hysectomy means that i will never be able to have biological children of my own <sighs> anybody who knows me knows how much i want to be a mom one day i've dreamed of being a mother and um that really really broke me and I, I think i was in shock so i didn't cry in the moment but i you know i remember telling taylor years ago that that that's honestly my biggest fear is that i'm not going to be able to have kids because i've dealt with irregular periods for years and that was always a big fear of mine and um i was like that's it like that's nail in the coffin like okay that's it you know it's coming true but i was in shock so i didn't cry or anything um and so <clears throat> then they put me back in the room the other room to do my blood transfusion blood transfusion takes about four hours so i couldn't get transferred until four hours so for f these four hours and the t extra two of me getting transferred and going to the hospital i think i have cancer and i think i'm gonna have to have a vasectomy and i think that i will never have kids of my own so the doctor comes in or the nurse comes in and she tells me that i'm gonna get transferred to galveston which we were like Galveston. We thought I was gonna get transferred to like downtown Houston, right? Or something like that. So they're like, you're gonna get transferred to Galveston. I got transferred to UTMB. I got this, I love this tumbler by the way. This is like my little trophy. But they said, I'm gonna get transferred to Galveston. So they knew, my mom and Taylor knew they had to pack bags. So they go home and they pack bags. My dad's staying with me in the room. My, my poor dad. <laughs> I could tell he was so everyone's like just so devastated and tired and we're all in shock this is so quick and fast and so i remember i need to go to the restroom so one of my nurses i had another nurse who was in when i was doing the blood transfusion her name was io 
and when she walked in the room she goes oh, gorgeous gorgeous <laughs> so beautiful and i tell her what the other nurse told me and she goes well you know god will have the final say but what we're not going to do is we're not going to give up so she said just wait for the second opinion you're going to go to the other hospital you're going to give you a second opinion but we're not going to give up and i was like you're right we're not going to give up you're right she was an angel and i had to go pee so she disconnected me from my um blood transfusion and i went in the restroom i came back and before she reconnected me came back in the room i told my dad i looked at my dad and i go dad i'm scared and for the first time i started crying and i and i go i'm not scared for my own life because i wasn't i genuinely did not care i, I didn't think about dying once I, I wasn't scared of dying i was like i'm scared that i'll never have kids and my dad comes over to me and he's like holding me and he's like it's okay you know it'll be okay and um you know i'm super uncomfortable because i have my hair like in this half up half down i still have a full face of makeup for brunch that day so my dad's like you know i'm i have the iv i get hooked back up to the blood transfusion and so i really can't like do my arm so i'm trying to like take off my makeup with one hand and my dad's like let me help you so he's like i've never done this before and he's taking these makeup wipes he uses like eight makeup wipes <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell him that like he needs to just like use one more efficiently. It was the cutest thing. He's like helping me. He's like wiping on the makeup. He's like, I think I got it. And he's like wiping all the makeup off my face. And he helps take my hair out of the half up, half down. I put it in a bun. I'm a little more comfortable. And then it's maybe like maybe like 4:30. I'm done with the blood 4:30 in the morning. I'm done with the blood transfusion and um i'm trying to find the picture because i did take a picture in the meantime that has the time stamp on it it's about 4 4 30 4 15 i'm done with the blood transfusion and the nurse comes in and tells me my ambulance is here so i take an ambulance ride to galveston worst ride ever it was so bumpy so cold i was on morphine though so i was like in and out and to be honest with you i was barely awake poor my mom really because she was sitting in the ambulance with me and it was so cold and so bumpy i was at least on the stretcher like laid out she was like in the little chair but we head to galveston and i get there and maybe like around 7 45 um i got maybe like two hours of sleep my doctor walks in the room and it's so funny because he looked like he could be like 18 years old and he walks in the room and he's like tell me how you feel tell me what happened and everything and he's like we're still looking at the scans still trying to understand what's going on but in the meantime i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna feel feel around in your ovaries and do it like exam checkup on you and stuff so i was like okay we still don't know no word of what the what the mass is or anything like that okay so i had to quick, take a quick intermission <laughs> but um i left off that so then my doctor had left soon like not even three minutes after he left two women came in my room and they were like we're gonna get you ready for surgery and my mom was like surgery like we were all like surgery because I, at the time that i think they had thought that we had already the doctor was in and he had told us that i needed surgery but that hadn't happened and so my mom is like surgery for surgery for what like i said we still haven't heard anything on the mass we didn't know i'm like is this a hysectomy like what are y'all taking what what is the surgery you know and um then they said that the doctor had actually got a call and that they want to do surgery they feel like it's best to do surgery right now so the surgeon comes in the room and she tells me um the first question my mom has is she's like is this a cancerous tumor and she goes great question mom the mass is benign which means that it is not cancerous and so my mom is like like she could finally breathe and i felt so much better and taylor felt so much better um and she said that the pain that i had been feeling was possibly ovarian torsion now i know it, it was ovarian torsion ovarian torsion is when your ovary flips on itself and it's extremely painful it can induce uh fever and not in uh, vomiting which i had both and also it hurts when you do lay flat i was reading which was what i was experiencing and what they were worried about well 
my, basically what she was telling me is like the morphine should have wore off by now and if you're not feeling bad we believe that maybe it it flipped back and this would be the best time to go in there and, and get those cysts out so that it doesn't turn again and you're in excruciating pain again but um because from the ultrasound it didn't look like it was fully twisted because your ovary can fully twist and then it can be it come dead because no blood flows there and then you have to get it removed so they wanted to prevent prevent that from happening and so my surgeon told me you know she was telling me all this and i remember asking her i was like so is there a chance that i wake up and don't have ovaries and she was like yeah and <laughs> I expected her I guess I expected her to say no because I was like oh but she she promised me that she would try her best to save one of my ovaries because I was 25 and you know she's like we want you to have ovary we want you to have an op opportunity to have kids because with having no ovaries and just having a uterus I could carry a child but that child would not biologically be mine it would be a egg donor and Taylor sperm and I would have to go through IVF to insert it in me and then I could carry a baby but it would not be mine biologically because I'd have no eggs to produce obviously um so she promised me that she would do everything to save at least one of my ovaries but she could not guarantee that I would have both um but she made me feel so confident when I tell you she was so like I didn't I really was not worried at all um shockingly and honestly it was really God's like grace and his covering of me because that's not like me that's not in my characteristic I am a very over like I overthink I worry a lot so I knew that that was the hand of God on me is why I was so calm and I had so much drink that was not from me <laughs> at all but I felt very confident in her and she was just she was so amazing as well and she made me feel very confident as well and she was like okay we're gonna prep you and we're gonna take you down to meet your anesthesiologist and he was so funny he was such a cool dude and then I met the rest of the team that said they would be in the surgery room with me and I had my mom take a picture of me before surgery and I'll insert it and uh, I felt really good like I had never I've never had surgery I'd never been under ana anesthe anesthesia so uh i was pretty nervous about that i was like i know this is a dumb question but like i won't feel anything right <laughs> and they were like no you'll be knocked out you know um and so it was just like in the movies i get rolled into this bright white room and i don't see anything and you know well i saw the doctors around me and then i just like knocked out but before then my mom my parents in me our family were really big on like the power of prayer and so a lot of my family didn't even know what was going on like i said th from the time that i got admitted to the hospital to the time i had surgery was it wasn't even i don't know like nine hours and so we really didn't have time to tell my family but we wanted my my parents wanted everybody praying for me so he called my grandma and anybody we could just to say pray for me because i'm going to emergency surgery but nobody had really knew what was going on and my grandma made a post on Facebook and like I have a lot of family I have family in Texas and Cali and Mississippi and so I have a lot of a lot of distant cousins and, and just things and people who care about me so everybody was really confused <laughs> and that's why I made the Instagram post after the fact because that same night I couldn't sleep and I thought it would be best to make a post kind of stating what had happened because I knew so many people so much of my family and friends just did not know what was going on but they were praying for me you know so it was kind of like that kind of thing but I woke up from surgery the first thing I asked was do I have both my ovaries and I did have both my ovaries and I was so happy and um it took me a while to wake up from the anesthesia apparently uh, Taylor said it was like an hour and of course they were like a mess and so the surgery i had was an ovarian cystectomy and when i look up though it says the surgery is pretty quick mine's was like four or five hours um so i don't know what that's about but um i do have my incisions which i'll show you guys at a later date but um, i think they did a really good job with everything I, i'm so happy with everything all my doctors and nurses were really amazing and they rolled me back up and my brother and his girlfriend kaya were there and apparently I saw him and I was like you made it or something and he was so happy he was smiling so big and um, you know I was still like heavily 
under the drugs but um once everything got settled they did realize what they thought where they thought my blood was going was to a to the cyst the largest cyst so none of my cysts had blood in them they were fluid filled but they they didn't have blood so they were still concerned about where my blood was going and so after that and recovery and everything i stayed another night and the next day you know they had told me that they basically came to the conclusion that i just was not making enough blood because they're like you're not losing it anywhere so you're just not making it they're pretty much saying and so they uh another doctor came in and he told me that it was a blood doctor so i had a, a gynecologist and her team then i had a blood doctor and he came in and told me that my iron levels were so low that most women that, that come in with those low iron levels are like passing out and fainting often and he's like how are you not tired all the time and i'm like i am <laughs> and just a couple months prior taylor you know he told me he was like you sleep way too much like you're so tired even after doing nothing like you get so tired like that's not normal and he had told me that because my body was functioning with this low blood levels it must have been like a slow burn like over the last couple of years my body has just gotten used to having no energy and the fact that i was like still working out and still doing things with such a low blood count was like really amazing and um he basically told me that no supplements at this point could ever could get my i couldn't take enough supplements to get my blood back up so i needed an iron iv so before i left i had to get an iron iv and that was four hours too because it was a slow drip and uh he said after you get this it, like it'll take a few days to like settle in but you'll probably feel the best that you've ever felt in years because your iron levels are so your blood levels are so low and so i was excited about that and um i have to say i feel like i already feel it honestly like i'm surprised with how much energy i have in this recovery and i had to think about it i'm like oh i had that iron iv and i i already feel the side effects from that but for follow-up in two weeks i have now i have a hematologist which is a blood doctor that i have to go see here in houston and they're gonna do a checkup on me to see if my if the iron iv had taken well to where like my blood levels are normal um or if they're back low again i did actually start my period the day after surgery so i've been on my period and recovery which really sucks but um i'm wondering if that will factor into like me losing some of the blood obviously because of that but they'll go through all of that during the checkup and then i might have to get he said i might have to get blood uh, iron iv every three months to keep my blood levels up um and my energy levels up so that was like another discovery for me um on top of that but yeah that was kind of it and then you know i'm trying to think if i missed anything but that was pretty much the full back part of everything and i'm just really thankful and blessed that i have both my ovaries and my uterus and i don't have cancer and oh man i'm just so blessed and uh, thank you guys so much for all of you who've reached out after my instagram post and all my family and friends if you're watching this i feel so loved and cared for uh taylor has been the the most amazing man i couldn't have chosen a better person to be you know my future husband and my life partner i i can't explain i just can't explain it like it would be too much i'm not even gonna get into it and i don't want to cry again but he has been absolutely amazing obviously my parents my brothers my just i've had people reach out to me old friends from middle school and you know uh my co-workers like i I feel very loved and very very taken care of and I'm just so blessed and thankful and I think that this is another experience that's opened my eyes so much to the meaning of life and um, love and community and um, it's another reason why you know I wanted to come on here because I really do love that I've had such an amazing community that I've cultivated since I was in high school not really knowing but in a way that i think is so beautiful that i have this online community with you guys and um so many of you guys had so many beautiful words to say and will still continuously reach out to me and i do answer dms so i love to hear it and see you guys and oh, man so anyways um i do want to 
take you guys on my journey of just getting back well again unfortunately i'm not clear to lift anything over 10 pounds for six weeks so that puts a dent in my workout plans for 2024 for the beginning of the year but it's not how you start it's how you finish um and just i need to address my diet and just do different things for my health i, I have to be very serious with my health and um that starts now you know what i've learned is like life is too short and while you have the ability to do things do them because now that i'm not working out i'm thinking of all the times i decided not to work out because i was being lazy and now it's like i actually can't work out you know so you have to do things while you can do them and keep going and oftentimes me overthinking sidetracks me and it like paralyzes me so i do nothing and you always have to continue to go that's what i've learned about life is like you gotta go you know and rest is important of course but you'll get rest like life will rest you in different ways you know um but overall i think the most beautiful thing about about the comments i've gotten on that post is how many people that are praising god i think that is so wonderful i get so many comments like praise god praise god praise god because he's worthy to be praised and seeing a whole comment section of people praising him i couldn't ask for more because really it's about him i'm just the vessel but it's truly about him i've learned so much about god in this experience and i want to bring taylor on a video to talk about not only his side but also to talk about those moments where we thought that we weren't going to be able to have kids and that experience for us and i want to leave you guys with this bible verse it's james 1 2 to, to 4 it says consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything so this experience has matured me it has further complete me and soon i will not be lacking anything through all of the trials and tribulations that i will be continuing to go through in my life and i consider it pure joy god is so good